What's up, knucklehead? I am Lupine Fiasco, and this is your Daily Fab Gameplay. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome to the jungle. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed, that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I'll talk through turn cycles and give my thoughts on the line I would take now, compared to the line I took then at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future, to take down paper events like the upcoming U.S. Nationals, and most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you would like to check out the deck I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, there is a Fabry deck link available in the video description below. While you're down there, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord and the shiny, shiny cardboard Talishar card back. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video. You'll get bonus DFG content every week, and there are even more benefits to come. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. Now, let's talk about our sideboard and about our game plan. I apologize for bringing you another new game. Uh, you know that I like to give some variety on the channel. I know that I've been neglecting Enigma, Zen, some of the other top meta heroes, at least... You know, in early days of the Mistvale format. At the same time, new is the only thing that I queue into on Talishar these days. And at the very least, her meta share at ProQuest Montreal was the highest of any hero. So it doesn't feel like this is necessarily a waste. I'm hoping that I can bring you other heroes in the near future, but it is seriously all new these days. Um... The silver linings of that is you will know exactly how to play against her based on my experience that has been honed over more games against the hero than I really would like to be playing. Um, our sideboard plan against New is extremely similar to our root plan. We are just cutting cast bones and putting in wild ride because we don't want to block. We want to be converting hands into offense. Uh, every turn that we can because blocking new is bad. The entire deck is full of reactions, hand disruption, arsenal disruption, all of the old assassin favorites, surgical extraction, leave no witnesses, command and conquer, with a few new tools like persuasive prognosis and bonds of agony, all backed up by hiss, venomous bite, just a nick, uh, the gloves, her boots. New can convert four and five card hands really well, and in doing so can likely take cards away from you. At the same time, her damage is not great, so we are not going to attempt to mid-range her out like we would against Uzuri or Arachne. We are just going to race, and we are going to outvalue her. We are going to go above rate, which she cannot do as her reactions do not play above rate. And when she starts to miss on the disruption or starts to need to block and can't hold on to all of those attack reactions, that's how we snowball the game. Um, I've been showing you this for a couple weeks now. I'm going to keep at it because this strategy continues to work, at least against Talishar News. And i uh, really excited to bring this to Nationals and see if it performs there as well. We lost the die roll, we will be going first. Uh, this is a really interesting hand because there are a few lines we could take. We could discard Mighty Wind Up, Arsenal, Blood Rush, Bellow, and Pass. We could discard Mighty Wind Up, attack with a pack hunt by pitching Blood Rush, Bellow, and Pass. 
we could just pass all together but because of how new plays and how disruptive she is it's pretty unlikely at least in my experience that if we arsenal this blood rush we will find a better opportunity to use it that if we just arsenal pass we are potentially uh gonna catch new without the ability to really push any disruption but if she does push disruption then the blood rush may just rot in our arsenal or may get banished altogether so rather than sit on it let's just play it at the bare minimum we're probably going to send 13 damage this turn between mandible claw and pack hunt that pack hunt is going to offer additional disruption as it takes a card out of Mew's hand very likely we get to keep an arsenal so rather than just sit on our blood rush and potentially lose it let's instead play it get a little value on turn one and try to set up an arsenal now with the cards that we've drawn here uh, we could really uh, get risky by firing off a wild ride and hoping to keep this blue wrecker romp and pack hunt or at least replace a wrecker romp with a different blue or pack hunt with a different red but that only pushes two more damage between uh, Manable Claw Pack Hunt. And if we hold on to this Wild Ride, we get to tuck it into Arsenal, which again, no guarantee we actually get to play it from Arsenal. There's no guarantee that it sticks around. But I think that sending 13 with guaranteed hand disruption from Pack Hunt and getting to keep that Wild Ride is worth the potential extra two points of damage. New takes two from the Mandible Claw and five from the Pack Hunt. We get to tuck a Wild Ride. I'd say this was a pretty good turn one. Uh, we really do want to go second in this matchup so that we can block whatever New does on her first turn, then crack back with a full hand. But if we do have to go first, this really is the best case scenario. Uh, this hand sucks and we are sad to have drawn it. At the same time, we are not going to block the mist blade or at least i don't think we should we can just hold on to all of our cards at the bare minimum if we aren't disrupted we get to wild ride from arsenal by pitching blue agile wind up hope to find our way into better cards but even if we draw and discard same card and we're stuck with these two yellow agile wind ups and run rough shot that at least means we get to pitch a windup to claw, use our floating to play run rough shot. We could discard agile windup to make agility or arsenal it depending on how new blocks. So we aren't gonna block the mist blade. Uh, we will let her get plus one and go again on a blue that she plays out. And we kind of aren't too worried about that. So here we've got Bonds of Agony, which is our first opportunity to really test this idea of what happens if we just don't block. Bonds does not have an on hit unless New reacts, and she very easily could be sitting on something like a Venomous Bite. She has pitched a blue, so the Venomous Bite would make a Fang Strike. That is the second reaction that Bonds of Agony needs. We end up taking quite a bit of damage, but we still keep a four card hand, and new potentially doesn't have a follow-up to the bonds of agony so we have taken uh at this point around 10 damage but we still get to crack back with something like 13 or 14 so we are still staying above news rates so we just aren't going to block bonds now if this was persuasive prognosis which does have an on hit i could absolutely see putting armor in front of it but uh it isn't. There's no on hit, so we are not going to take news bluff. Leave no witnesses here is bad timing for us. We really would love to keep this wild ride in arsenal. At the same time, we need to play around new having an attack reaction. She has at least one in the alluring wave, which would give the leave no witnesses plus one. She could, in theory, give it go again with Undertow Stiletto and then play something like Codex of Frailty, which would, could potentially be troublesome for us. But we are content to just let the Leave No Witnesses hit. We get to convert this hand by 
Attacking with Mandible Claw, pitching blue Agile Windup, discarding yellow Agile Windup to give it go again. We can then play Run Roughshod and Arsenal Yellow Agile uh, at the bare minimum. If this is something like Siren's Call, then we can uh, hold on to a blue. Curious to see how I decide to block this. I don't hate this line. We are holding on to our wild ride if this doesn't hit and still getting to convert that four card hand. If we do lose the wild ride because new plays a reaction from hand or breaks the alluring wave, then we still get to convert this hand. We don't have to arsenal a bad card and we have forced new to use a reaction. So I don't mind this block, I like this quite a bit. Um, I'm a fan of forcing new to do something, and if she doesn't do something, we still get to go pretty above rate. So I'm glad I saw this block in the moment. I think not blocking here would have been perfectly fine. Um, it means that new gets to arsenal this hiss instead of playing it. Um, we are aware that new has a slither in her arsenal, and we are just going to play out the Mandible Claw, discard windup, play run roughshod line, threatening 10 points of damage, making that might and agility for our next turn, and putting the onus on new to do something. What I don't like about that previous block is that we are now down a point, uh, two points on our Apex Bone Breaker. Holding on to armor for the mid to late game Leave No Witnesses is uh, always a very strong line against Assassin, has been for a while, and still is against New. Looking at Bonds of Attraction here, whatever. We've got a good four card hand, we can lead with a Pulping, we get to convert this hand. The Pulping has go again, no matter what, thanks to Agility, so we can just take damage. We don't need to worry about this. New can gain some life. That's fine. Uh, she's going to have to spend some resources to keep going. If she wants to give it go again, she does have that slither. But, uh, alright. Plus, we don't want to have to play around just a Nick, which we always need to be aware of. New does play the slither. Let's see if she wants to use it or if she is just clearing out the arsenal. Um, in any event, she does hit a blue and decides to banish a run roughshod rather than a wild ride, which would have given her a bit of a life buffer. I think that is probably wrong on her side. Banishing run roughshod gives her a blue that she could in theory play. At the same time, run roughshod can only be played if the hero has discarded a card that turn, which new notably does not do outside of Codex of Frailty, and I doubt any card that she would discard to Codex is worth less than Run Roughshod. So uh, probably a bit of a value leak there. That is one of the advantages that Kao has against New compared to other heroes like Victor, Bravo, um, is that our blues notably suck. Outside of uh, Run Roughshod or Wrecker Romp, every blue in our deck is a 5 power attack with no on hit. Wrecker Romp is a 6 power attack that forces New to discard, and Run Roughshod is a 5 power attack that cannot be played unless New meets a condition. So, in general, New hitting our blues is not bad for us because they don't do anything. This is compared to Cranial Crush or Macho Grande that are all really good with plus one and go again. We are just going to play Pulping, Pitch Agile Windup, see what the rest of the turn looks like. Uh, draw into a blue and keep our Windup is not great. Um, we get to either push three damage with uh, Mandible Claw and discard wind up to make agility, or we push six damage by attacking with while uh, agile wind up or riled up. I think the line here is play the agile wind up and pitch the riled up. Here I'm doing it to, in theory, keep a yellow and a wind up in my deck. The problem I see with this is that we are putting another blue into our discard, 
And although our blues suck for new, we don't want to really give them to her. Let's turn down a surgical extraction. If this hits, we do still have a turn. Uh, new cannot take a single card from our hand and cost us a turn. Either she takes our blue and we get to E-strike for eight arsenal swing big, or she takes our E-strike and we get to swing big for nine. The problem is we need to consider uh, what happens if new takes a second card from our hand. And the way that she would do this is with Siren's Call. Um, if new plays Siren's Call, she takes our Smash Instinct. She still hits with the Surgical Extraction and can take our E-Strike, which leaves us with two Swing Bigs. And at that point, we either pitch two Swing Bigs to Mana Claw for four, which is terrible, or we take an Intellect Penalty by arsenaling one Swing Big and having the other in our hand. All this being considered, let's think about what happens if we block Surgical Extraction with Swing Big. New plays her Siren's Call. The Surgical now doesn't hit because we're blocking for six. And if New somehow was able to push damage over the top of those blocks, then we are still in that same position where she can't stop us from having a turn. We either E-Strike or Swing Big. So that all being the case, as much as I don't want to block because we still have a turn, if we uh, lose two cards from our hand, assuming that we are blocking with one of them, I would block the Surgical Extraction with Swing Big. And this is in fact the turn that made me realize, oh right, Siren's Call is a card and we need to consider what happens if it gets played. So because the Siren's Call is now played, we lose our Smash Instinct we also lose our E-Strike, and now we don't have a turn. Whereas if we had blocked with the Swing Big already, then we lose both of them, but we still have our E-Strike. So pretty solid turn for New. She draws a card from the Siren's Call, but doesn't have the action point to play it. We are just going to pass an Arsenal a Swing Big, uh, rather than pitch both to Manable Claw. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, at this point, considering that New is opening with Beckoning Mistblade and is pitching a Transcend card to do so, I am pretty skeptical of her ability to put a big turn together if this Mistblade doesn't hit. And this was a little heads up play on my part, uh, watching this game back initially. It wasn't immediately obvious to me why I made this block, but in hindsight, blocking the Mistblade here with Bonebreaker is actually really good. Um, we potentially stand in New's way of converting a large hand. At this point, Leave No Witnesses is threatening our Swing Big. We can think about what cards New could be holding that make this really bad for us. And what I think of immediately is Hiss, Codex of Frailty, which costs us quite a few cards, um, which means that we are thinking about a potential uh, flush bag turn. Flush bag here, combined with Savage Sash, or a card from hand, uh, would take away one of New's two remaining cards. She could potentially give the Leave No Witnesses go again by using the Floating Resource and Undertow Stilettos. Um, have a card in hand and a card in Arsenal as a follow-up. So if it is Codex in hand, New can't play it because her Arsenal is full. If it is Codex in Arsenal, New loses the card in her hand to play it, and we keep our Arsenal. So all of this is to say that blocking the Leave No Witnesses with Flesh Bag and the Swing Big in our hand actually sounds pretty good. Now what are ways that New could get us if we take that line? The 
real option that I see would be Kiss from Hand or Arsenal and then Codex as the other card, uh, which could potentially be bad for us. At the same time, um, we can just get something back, get like a blue or a yellow back from our discard and then lose it to Leave No Witnesses. What happens if we just let Leave No Witnesses hit? We lose our swing big from Arsenal. We still have a turn. Um, the Codex follow-up is potentially devastating. I like blocking with Fleshbag here, but I decide not to. So let's see what the ramifications of this are. There's the hiss. There's the slither. Rowdy Locals uh, is what New was attempting to set up with the Mist Blade. We don't really want to discard a card, honestly. Um, we would like to play Wild Ride, pitch our blue, hopefully claw swing big, the minimum claw pulping, or just swing big or pulping. Uh, let's put our sash in front of this. Rowdy Locals is not an assassin attack. New cannot shred it. So we are not at risk at losing our sash due to the temper. Um, it's totally fine. New keeps a card and we just convert a four card hand. Breaking the sash here is aggressive. I do not agree with this play. Um, pretty wild to me that I actually take this line. Uh, if we discard our pulping and don't draw something with go again, then, I mean, really we accomplish nothing. And this is the case here. Um, we can either take the chance that we did not take at the beginning of the game, play the wild ride and hope to keep the swing big, or we just place mandible claw swing big, which I agree with, just like this was probably what our turn looked like if we don't break sash and now we have broken sash um i strongly disagree with that use of sash sash in this uh game was worth a maximum of three points and potentially worth zero uh but regardless we did it new uh double transcending going to give her two chi and a mystery card just checking our discard seeing again bad blues checking our banish bad blues so if new really wants to use her ability banish from our graveyard great knock yourself out pitching a chi for the mist blade is prime fleshbag opportunity. The reasoning being that New currently has a Chi and a card we don't know. If we hit the Chi with the fleshbag, then she has a card to play. We can block with this hand um, or not, depending on what the card is. But if we hit the Chi, then her arsenal has to be exactly surgical extraction. She could have it in hand, but at that point we can block. She won't have floating resources, so she will be pretty face up. If the card in her arsenal is Codex, again, she can't play it because uh, she would discard a card from hand. If the card in her hand is Codex, she can't play it because her arsenal is full. So this, similar to last turn, is a fine opportunity to flesh bag, and is exactly what I do because now we are forcing News hand. She can pitch her chi to her hero power. She cannot pitch it to mask because mask is an attack reaction and fleshback happens before reactions. So she pitches it to her hero power. She potentially gets the top of our deck, but she gets all of the bad blues in our discard and she loses this card in her hand. So now she has potentially two resources. We don't know what's in her arsenal and potentially not a good card using the tunic to spider's bite something we're not going to block 
Um, it would be very unusual for us to ever block a spider's bite that was not threatening lethal damage, so we will just take this. We block worse, but we don't want to block any of these bad blues anyway, so Riled Up comes in for five. It's totally fine. We can convert a four card hand to offense. We go to a very healthy 14. Um, the line here is going to be E-Strike CNC. Uh, E-Strike Pack Hunt is a little better for threatening damage, but I like threatening news arsenal uh, more than I like potentially dealing a little more damage. I think that threatening the arsenal is better, potentially locking new out of playing defense reactions is strong, and you see whatever was in her arsenal, whatever she really wanted to keep, uh, to her was worth mask and tunic, which is fantastic. Desires of Flash coming in for one. I do not care about losing the top card of my deck. I do slightly care about um, new gaining life. I would like her to not do that. I am going to block with Scabskin Leathers. More just because I haven't blocked with it yet than for anything else. I don't want to block from hand. Uh, new plays out the Justinic, which is going to take two cards off the top of our deck between it and Desire. New gains two life, very likely, but we're still chilling at 10. We get to convert four cards, uh, see if we win the Beast Within Lottery. We do, and draw into a second Beast Within and Send Packing. New does not have an arsenal, so Send Packing has no value besides being a yellow pitch. Let's Mandible Claw Runner Runner and continue to threaten lethal, continue to keep pressure on new. We get two cards away from her, we leave her with a one card hand, which at most is breaking uh, Silver to draw a card at worst is just Arsenal Pass. New pitches the blue to break the silver. Rips a Codex, which is probably the best card she could have drawn. Uh, she grabs a Leave No Witnesses. At this point, New is at one. We still have misses in our deck for pulping, but few and far between. Uh, we get to block with our Scabskin Leathers and a 3 block to cover the Leave No Witnesses effect. And with 3 cards it is a little unlikely that we win. Um, so what I like doing here is just grabbing Pulping, discarding Bear Fangs. We can block the uh, Leave No Witnesses with Runner Runner and Scabskin and then play pulping, and New needs to draw exactly a defense reaction from her ponder to not lose the game, and we need to not miss off the top of our deck with pulping, but very unlikely to do that. We've, no Witnesses comes in for four, New has no floating resources for Luring Wave, we can just block for four, and uh, in for lethal damage with Pulpin. There's a line where we E-Strike for 8 here, get two card, uh, three cards away from New, but honestly, why risk it? She needs to have exactly two D-Reacts here, and even if she does, we get to Arsenal E-Strike to potentially win off of that, and we just get there with a the Pulpin. Um, pretty interesting game, honestly. This has been my experience with New, is that she just needs to hit disruption and it is hard for her to do it consistently. It's a lot harder for her to disrupt us than it is for us to just go above rate, certainly above her rate. The flesh bag block comes down to what you think New can put together off of her remaining cards and can you deal with the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario usually is Leave No Witnesses hits your arsenal. The follow-up is Codex of Frailty to get Leave No Witnesses back. And what can you do about that? Um, so Flashback there just coming in as like 
stop the mist blade, uh, take a card out of Mu's hand. That flesh bag prevented seven points of damage by stopping the mist blade, stopping the mist blade effect, and stopping a second blue being played from our banish zone. And the first blue that was played from our banish zone was just garbage. That is the advantage that KO has over Guardian or even over uh, other brutes is that our blues are just terrible cards. I hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something. If so, be sure to take that like button to Pound Town. My comments are always open for questions or feedback. If you haven't already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It's free. It helps me out a lot. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and the Patreon link is in the video description. Whatever you do, catch me back here next time for more daily fab gameplay. And until then, take care.